Today I'm going to rank each action figure in the DC Multiverse Batman Beyond Collect and Connect Futures End Wave, and we're going to find out which of these action figures is worth getting, which of them maybe not so much. Be sure you stick around until the end, Soulmates, because that's where we're going to rank this wave's Build-A-Figure. If you support what I do, please click subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single video of mine when it comes out. The first action figure from this wave we're going to talk about is, of course, Batman Beyond. This one is pretty much the same Batman Beyond toy we've already seen released individually by McFarlane Toys. So if you have that one, you might not really need this one, although it is worth mentioning that this one does have accurate batarangs compared to the other Batman Beyond release. But that Batman Beyond release also has jet boot effects. Also very curiously, this Batman Beyond comes with a couple of extra hands that have trigger fingers on them. Accessories aside, the only thing that's really different about this one is the head sculpt. It doesn't have a mouth on it. Is this head sculpt mostly accurate to what we see from Batman Future's End? Well, we see both versions in that story, so I'd say, yeah, it's mostly accurate, although the head sculpt on the action figure does look slightly different from what we see in the comics. He has a lot of movement in his torso, so that's nice to have. You can move him around almost to the point where he bends over. There's a little bit of action at the hips, but there isn't a ton of it, so you can't really make him do some crazy poses with his legs or anything. One thing I wish we could do a little bit more with on Batman Beyond is the cape or the wings. I wish we could take them off and just have him posing without them. But with the way the wings are on this toy, you're kind of compelled to keep them out all the time and make him look like he's flying. And and honestly, that's where this one looks best, when you have him in a flying pose on a flight base. I like Batman Beyond, but it feels like it's lacking something. Honestly, it just feels like the same old figure I've already bought. So, I think I have to rate this one a B. I feel like there's more room for improvement on this one, but I do like it as it is. The second action figure released in this wave was Shriek. And this one was a real surprise for me. I was so impressed. The sculpt on this one is perfect. I don't see where they could have gotten it any better on Shriek here. And another fun thing for a Collect and Connect wave is that Shriek comes with an accessory, a little sound wave that you can attach to one of his hands. And it fits perfectly on his hand and it looks really cool what they've done with it. It's got little ridges on it so it has like this tactile feel to the sound that he's generating. It looks really cool. And Shriek himself is loaded with texture. There's all kinds of little ridges all over his armor. There's these blue orbs you see on Shriek's costume and they all have this translucent effect that adds this kind of luminescence to the action figure. I remember when Shriek was first announced, I thought to myself, how are they gonna handle the articulation on his hands? And the response here is kind of an interesting one because they have his hands on a ball joint here. But the ball joint works really well because they can move back and forth quite a bit, but they can also turn. And not only that, but his shoulders have so much more movement than you think they would too, because the little plastic shoulder pads on him are very pliable, so you're able to get his arms in pretty much any position you desire. Shriek can bend forward and backward really far for a DC Multiverse action figure. His head too has incredible range. You can look directly up and down. Now after I saw all these things, I thought to myself, oh man, once we get to the hips, that's where this joyride is gonna end. But then I started playing with Shriek's hips and once again, I was surprised because he has quite a bit of action in those hips. I was really blown away by the Shriek action figure. Everything on this one just felt right, and I feel like I have to give this toy an S tier. This is one of the best DC Multiverse action figures I have ever played with. The next toy in this wave we're going to look at is Batwoman. This one was pretty decent. I wasn't absolutely in love with it, but I really appreciated everything that I saw on this one. 
Now looking at the comic book panels, this does look a lot like what we see from the comics, but there are some differences too, because it looks like McFarlane Toys embellished this one quite a bit. I think the point here on Batwoman is that the big picture is there. The hair in the back is flowing. The little bat insignia is on her torso. The belt looks like it's supposed to look. Unfortunately for Batwoman, it felt like this one was kind of just a re-release of Batman Beyond, even though it wasn't because we still got kind of the same hands, and we still got kind of the same batarangs. When we get down to brass tacks, Batwoman and Batman Beyond, their designs are almost identical. So, just to have anything that would have mixed it up a little bit would have been nice. Batwoman has almost as much play in her torso as Batman Beyond does. Maybe a little bit less, but it's not enough that you'll really notice it all that much. The one thing that does get mixed up though is on her ankle articulation, where the boots are covering her ball joint. It's a little bit more difficult to move the ankle joint there, but it does cover up the articulation at the same time, so you kind of just have to work with it a little bit and you'll get what you want from it. One thing I did notice about Batwoman is that when trying to pose her, it's a little bit difficult because her feet are not completely flat on the bottom. So there's a little bit of roundness there that makes her fall over a lot when you're trying to get her standing up. I had a lot of fun with Batwoman. That said, this is another one that I feel like I like, but I don't necessarily love. So I feel like I have to rate her a B tier. She has a lot going for her, some really nice stuff going on, but I feel like there is some room for improvement on this one. We're now halfway through the video, Soulmates, and here are the rankings so far. The last standard action figure in this wave that we're going to look at is Blight. And the first thing I really noticed about this one was the head. Now, when you look at the head, it does look a little bit awkward because it feels like the head should be lower than it is on this action figure. And if you look at promo shots of Blight, you see that the skull is much lower in the pictures than it is on my version of the action figure. Now that out of the way, you can make this little capsule that houses his skull move around a little bit. You can move it side to side, back and forth, you can turn it so his head turns. And by the way, the effect on that exposed hand is just awesome. The little black painted bones just add a strange amount and it makes it look so eerie. Now he can't bend forward a lot because he's got this big plastic piece that's kind of in his way. He can bend backward quite a bit. Let's talk about the hip action. There's not a lot of twist on those hips. Not on these. The other figures in this wave had a little bit more twist. Unfortunately, Blight is pretty stationary down there. So how accurate is this costume to what we see in the comics? Well, overall, it is pretty accurate. There is maybe one set of lights that are not present on this action figure's legs that are present in the comic. I think the major difference on this one is that they decided to make the entire suit purple and then the armor piece is black. And it doesn't really look like that in the comics. If anything, it almost looks like the reverse when you look at the comic book panels. I really enjoyed Blight and he's one of my favorite action figures from this wave, but I feel like he's also got some room for improvement, so I think I have to rate this one an A tier. I really like him, but it just feels like they could do a little bit more with him. And of course, the final action figure in this wave is the Joker Bot. How does he stack up? How is he to previous Build-A-Figures from DC Multiverse Collect and Connect? I'm not gonna lie, when I saw those shoulder pegs, I thought to myself, oh boy. This is going to be so hard to put in, and I was really afraid that I was going to wind up breaking them. The Joker bot went together like a charm, and I was playing with him before you know it. Now, that's not to say that it's an absolutely perfect Build-A-Figure. The hips are still a little loosey-goosey in terms of staying on. They do stay on the body pretty well. 
but the legs, if you twist them around too much, have a tendency to come off sooner or later. The sculpt on this one is incredible, and it loosely follows what we see from the Future's End comic, but pretty obviously McFarlane Toys took some liberties here and there. It's not a one-to-one -one translation at all of the character that we see, but it is a very good representation, and I think that Mostly, they nailed the big picture on this one. Moving on from the design, the articulation is interesting on this one. And perhaps the most interesting part is the head, because it has two sides. It has a Joker side and a Batman side. And you can turn them around so one end is facing front. Obviously, having two faces on one head kind of limits the amount of articulation you can get by moving it back and forth. But the one thing that did take me by surprise was the waist joint. It doesn't really go forward at all. It's easy enough to twist the torso and make him bend side to side, but bending forward and backward, it's really not happening on this one. I feel like I want to give this one an A tier. I think it deserves an A tier because it's pretty good overall, granted there's still a lot of room for improvement. And now that all the toys have been ranked, here are the final rankings. Well Soulmates, what did you think of this Joker Bot Wave? Are you inspired to go out and get this one yourself? Are you still on the fence about whether or not you want these action figures? Or do you already have these action figures, and have you had as much fun with them as I have? Also guys, what are your rankings for these action figures if you do have them? Let me know what you think down in the comments guys, I would love to hear from you. If you want to check out my video where I rank the Suicide Squad King Shark Collect and Connect Build-A-Figure Wave, you can check out that video here, soulmates.